Hi everyone. We'll be looking at DietPy. It is a very versatile operating system that's not only built for the Raspberry Pi as the name suggests, it's also for other single board computers. Um, as a simple interface, and they have a good uh, documentation on the various softwares that it offer. Um, here's just a list of the sample softwares that they have. As you can see, they have quite a few options. Um, but for now, we'll install DietPy in VMware. Let's head over to the download section. Here you can see all the other uh, motherboards or the single board computers that they support, including the Raspberry Pi. We'll head over to the PC virtual machine section. And since we're using VMware, we'll hit that download button right there. Once it finishes downloading, We'll extract it and adjust some settings so that we'll be able to run it more efficient. By default, it comes uh, to use one GB of RAM and one processor. Well, definitely will be increased. After opening the file, uh, we need to extract it. As you can see, it has the virtual disk as well as the VM settings. Once you extract it to a place where you have enough space, all we have to do is just double click on the v.vmx file that will open the virtual machine as you can see it has reloaded with the default settings that it requires but let's edit the settings right now i'll be increasing the ram to 4 gigs uh, my system has 16 gigs of RAM. I can spare 4 gigs for this. And then I'll increase the processors too. The default hard disk storage is 8 GB. And I do recommend increasing it if you want to use uh, this virtual machine for more than just testing and playing around. I'm going to increase it to 16 gigs. Now once that's done, we are ready to launch the virtual machine. Looks like there has been some error. We'll address this in a few moments. By default, DietPi will auto-expand to use all the 16 gigs of storage space that we Of note, it is much faster to run on the connected. I think last time I used it on Raspberry Pi 4 with the 4 gigabyte model, it took about 10 minutes to get it up and running with the usual SSD. Now, as you can see, uh, it, is, it only has a LAN IP instead of an IP address, and now it gives us an error that is not able to connect to the internet. At this point, we'll just hit right in shut down now so that we can turn off the virtual machine and then we can uh, adjust the settings to allow uh, the networking to pass through. And we'll go back to the settings section of the virtual machine and or you can click the network adapter directly. We want to use the NAT type network connection. By default, it uses the bridge, but now we have to change it to NAT. So let's do that and then relaunch the virtual machine. Now we should connect without any issue. Now, as you can see, we do have an IP address that corresponds to our local IP. I'm going to use the default login for the diet pie, which is the username is root and the password is dietpy. Give it a few seconds for it to do its thing, bring up the menu.
now we have the option of opting in or opting out of sharing analytical data with the diet pie. I'm going to opt out at this point. By default, I do recommend changing the passwords. But for this testing purpose, I'm going to keep them intact. I'm going to leave the password as diet pie. But if you're installing on a personal machine or a Raspberry Pi that you intend to use or later on outside of the testing environment, I do recommend changing. Now let's head over to the software section. Here, I'm just going to install a desktop environment LXDE. I've had good results running that on the Raspberry Pi itself as well. So I'm going to use that same for the virtual machine. As you can see, scrolling down, they have a huge list of softwares. And the best part is they're auto configured. You just need to hit check mark and then install. Also, I'm going to change the SSH server to open SSH so that I can later on use mobile xterm or putty to use SSH and uh, get the command line up and running. Now, depending on how fast your internet is, uh, this will take a few minutes. I am letting this run in real time without doing any fast forwarding. I have some idea of the duration of the installation. While that installs, another benefit of using that site is that it allows you to back up all your settings without having to turn off the machine itself. All you have to do is get an external drive, save the backup, and format, format it either as ext4, ext4, and then go into the menu of Diet Pi, and then you can select that as a source for backups. I do highly recommend backing up from time to time as it prevents any data loss, especially on Raspberry Pi, because we run most of the software on the SD card. So we're almost done with the installation. Now it's finishing up with the SSH server. Once it's done installing, we'll do a quick reboot, and then we'll adjust it to auto login the desktop in one without us having to manually log in. Right. So we can just head enter reboot. This will reboot the virtual machine. As you can see, it works pretty fast because not loading the desktop environment at this time. So we'll enter login root, password that I did not change as diet pi. And then I'll type in diet pi minus sign config. Here we need to scroll down to auto start options and by default you can see it's set to option 0 which is the manual login. We're going to scroll down to option number 2 and then now you can select which user you want it to log in as. I'm going to stick with the root user and we'll hit save and then read again. Now this time it will automatically boot us to the desktop environment. I do recommend changing to a non-root user for day-to-day -day for security purposes. Now here we have it. 
guide pie installation has finished. We'll run HTOP to see how much resource that this machine is using out of the box. And seems like almost none. In with the brand new installation. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.